Okay, welcome back to episode 9 of the Reagan Server Project update. So what I'm going to do is, here's my house. It's directly above the biome dome, so I'm going to slowly reveal the biome dome. Uh, there's the Indian village, and oh, boom, biome dome on fire from the top. Philip did that, not sure why. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know why, because uh, it's, it's a good prank, but now the whole thing's on fire, and yeah. So, also, I don't know why, but this fire has never gone out. Like, ever. It's, it's the strangest thing. Neither has this fire. Philip made a ring of fire. You might, it doesn't go far that way. But you can see this ring of fire comes all the way around here. He was nice enough not to burn the village down. But, I mean, like, it's crazy. I had to turn off the fire spreading because there was so much of it. And it was causing forest fires. And then, I don't, I think Zach did this. Maybe it was Philip. Uh, he just made a big line of exploded ground. Um, anyway, sorry. I'm getting very distracted. I have recorded this video, by the way, three or four times. The first time, I don't know what happened. I think I died, lost a bunch of stuff, had to go get it, and then it was like, you know, tripping in front of the camera. And I just stopped it and restarted. Then that time, it was 20 minutes. I, I gave the full tour. It was 20 minutes, and I was like... No, I'm not going to sit through this. I mean, it's been like a week since I did the last one, but I was lingering along at stuff uh, and taking too long to explain things. And then this time, or the last time, my microphone was turned off. So I recorded the whole thing, but I was mute. So now I'm about to show you my entrance to my home. So let's say you wanted to enter my home, so you have to pay a fee, right? Well, actually, no, that's not how it works. So this is a dropper but it has to drop only a certain item. And that certain item I keep in my ender chest here, so I can just unlock my home and then put this away, and then no one else has access to what's inside my ender chests. So here's how it works. This dis or the dispenser on the outside drops into this dispenser here. Uh, it's full of the sand, which is the key, except for one. That one goes into a comparator, uh, or Sorry, once this is full, it gives a full signal into this comparator, and because this is a full signal too, it's not able to output unless this is full. That's how comparators work. It goes into a pulse extender that keeps the door open for longer. This redstone dust powers this block here, powers this rail, powers this. It goes spit. I think you can actually just get away with doing something like putting redstone on top of there, but the rail updates it in such a way that it'll spit it out, and then you just catch it and put it back in the chest. This is an automatic furnace station. Uh, this is my chest of stuff. Um, I have a bunch of steak in here because I was getting a bunch of books, or le I was getting tons of leather for books um, so that I can make, oops, uh, bookshelves. I'm going to drop down here, beauties of creative mode. Uh, I made these bookshelves to add an enchantment table area down here. It might be moved, but this is just a spot for where it's at. There's an anvil and then a chest uh, with some more books and a little enchantment potions because, you know, why not? Uh, of course, those were cheated in. Don't worry. Haha. -ha. Okay, so now this is our mob loot. I shouldn't update you on the loot and stuff that we have because it's boring. So moving on. That's the biome dome. We also added more beacons and I changed the colors. Might change them again, but it gives you a bunch of boosts. Um, this bad boy, this over here, this one's a fun one. So let me go over here and get this redstone block. This is kind of the idea. Oops. Except uh, this is a piston feed tape, so it cycles these blocks in a circle. So I did the same thing, but with glass and stained glass, and it'll cycle it around. This is a redstone clock um, that just you know it cycles through the tape. It's kind of laggy, but it's a disco, and yeah. Also, one of them. Let's see if I can get it to stop. Oh, right there. Right there. You see it? Yep. Oh, I didn't stop it enough. There we go. So, oh yeah, right here. This is what I call the printer mode because it just turns out that it's the cyan, magenta, and yellow, and then black. And it's literally the printer ink mode. And I just love it. Okay, moving on. Here's the ring of fire that Philip made. And here is what we call World Edit plus TNT. Uh, I filled up an entire chunk, so 16 by 16, filled that up and blew it up. All, like, filled it with TNT and blew it up. It was very crazy, 
and it made this hole. Uh, there's a little NPC village. Here's a little NPC house. Over here is Aaron's house. It's a nice little log cabin-esque themed uh, cabin on the outskirts of uh, tiny woods. These beacons right here uh, are for Philip's house. Well, he doesn't have a house. Oops. He um, Instead, Philip lives just underground, and he has dug through a bunch of caves, and I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of how far he's gone. So everywhere you see torches, this is where Philip has gone. And he's gone a lot down, down that way, a lot over here. He's dug some over here. Uh, he's gone a bunch this way. You can see he's gone tons that way. He's placed some obsidian there, or he's made obsidian there. And then he's dug a little tunnel this way that goes on for like tons more blocks over this way. I don't know how he did it because he hasn't played on the server for that long, but he's he's definitely stacked with some resources. I don't know where he's keeping it either. I haven't seen any chests or anything like that. Maybe he just throws it all out. I don't know. Anyway, he's gone all the way down this way. I mean, look at all those caves that are lit. Um, and he, he had to leave. Oh, whoa. Haha, <laughs> there's a guy. He, he dug his way up in the middle of an Indian village, which was probably this one, and they had to leave some beacons so that he knew how to get home. I think one of the beacons is this way. Uh, I made a nether portal here a while back, so uh, in case he got lost again, he could probably make his way back. Yeah, there's one of the beacons. There's another one of the beacons. I'm going to go back into creative mode. And so he, he left this beacon trail behind him to, uh, you know, to find his way home. So I think that's pretty much it for updates. We just made a big hole, goofed off, added a lot more beacons. Um, the slime farm, I forgot to mention, the slime farm doesn't work because the dang creeper blew up my little elevator. It, it still works, but the elevator was cool and it blew up. And the elevators have been pretty glitchy lately anyway. I might just get rid of them with command blocks. We also upgraded the piston wave machine. This is really pretty. I love it. It's great. Um, and I think that's all of the overworld updates. So for now, let's jump into the nether and I'll show you what we've done there or what I've done. I used world edit mainly to clear out this area. This shulker box here has all the stuff that we'll need to make a train station. And so that's kind of the next big project. Although, I think I'm going to need a few more portals, because a lot of these portals are close together. The one over here is kind of farther away, but for the most part, all the portals are kind of close together. And if we have way more portals that are way farther out, then that'd be cool. So, then I was thinking, oh, because things go far out, I'm going to make a little highway system. So, this is what I call the Nether Highway. It's in, it's not inspired by, it's copied sort of from 2B2D, from 2B2T, which is like the oldest server ever. I don't know, it's not the oldest server ever, but it's a really old server, and they have these nether highways where people have just dug out tunnels throughout the nether. It's like a, it's an anarchy server, completely survival, and people dig out these tunnels, so I dug, well I didn't dig, I used world edit for a thousand blocks in each direction, so this should be the positive X, this is the negative Z, I think. Positive Z, positive X, negative Z, negative X. It says uh, where you're facing. So uh, this is the negative X one. It's, uh, it's just the one that intersects close with the portals. And these things go on for a good while. It took me a while to, um, to process all of the new chunks that it would uh, world edit loads a bunch new, a bunch of new chunks. Um, as it goes through and I also dug tunnels underneath here and then I realized I wasn't on the same level as the uh, I wasn't on the same level as the nether portal so I moved it up some with world edit and I put cobblestone every five blocks so that you know like what's what or you know that this is a highway because of how sporadic and weird it looks anyway all right that's it I'm not going to continue rambling on for another 20 minutes um, but, yeah, um, that concludes episode 9, um, so, yeah, for the next projects, I'm just gonna be looking for more villages around the place, you know, and, um, I don't know why I'm clicking here, I'm bored, but I'm just gonna, like, go around finding more villages, making more nether portals, I even coded my own little nether portal calculator that will tell me the correct coordinate coordinates, because you can't, you, you can't have you know, partial blocks 
in the nether so you have to make sure that in the overworld your nether portals are on blocks that are multiples of eight otherwise they won't directly link up and you'll get a bunch of errors and stuff uh, i would encourage you to look up how nether portals link it's really cool there's a cool algorithm behind it um that's pretty advanced stuff but yeah that's all i've got to say i think i've already been recording for like 20 minutes sorry for how long this is but um yeah okay that's all see you later in the next episode